It's a big day. It's actually a big day as it's the first day of November. So welcome to the future, my friends. And there is plenty to talk about on Bitcoin for the higher term timeframes as we loop back into, uh, well, more of the higher term time frame analysis um, and also follow up on uh, some of the things that we were speaking about on over the weekend. So other than that, I want to welcome you back to the Aircrime Crypto channel. Also, major massive announcement, which I will post um, a more particular video for later. I'm actually going to be bundling the jewel light now with a ton of other indicators um, actually coming in from Chart Prime. So if you've been watching this channel for a while now, you've probably seen me use, for example, this indicator that gives you the daily range statistics. So it divides everything by days, meaning Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then gives you, uh, hey, over the history of what you have, how many have closed positively versus negatively, what was the average return for those, so on and so forth. And then of course, there are a few other um, indicators that come with it as well, which I'll actually probably show at least one or two of them in today's video. Anyways, uh, you can find that link in the description below, and uh, and also you can just try for for free for 14 days. So you, it's it's literally like a whole bundle, massive fucking value, and you can try it for free. All right, sweet. Let's just jump right into it. Starting off right in over here. Um, this is of course the monthly accumulation and distribution indicator look. And we always like to check on this um, at the beginning of each and every month because it has been, one, incredibly good at uh, calling macro highs and macro lows. In fact, it was one of the major reasons that uh, we started to switch around to just macro bullish on this um, on this uh, channel here, at least just not macro bearish, but sideways enough, I think is the better terminology for that. Macro boring-ish, but kind of like bullish as well, I guess. I mean, Bitcoin is more than 2x off the lows now, so... I guess you could say that. Anyways, <clears throat> um, so I won't go through the full rigmarole on this one um, with calling the highs and the lows. I will go through the full rigmarole with speaking about um, where it is currently speaking. So this is the indicator in question. It is essentially the net delta between buys and sells um, on this time frame. And this is of significant interest as of right now because not only have we seen it first get the positive slope, which yes, was our, you know one of our major um, features in calling for, hey, downside markets over most likely, <clears throat> or at least for the foreseeable future. And then two, it started to turn green over here, which was the next big thing saying that, hey, Bitcoin is likely completing its accumulation phase. And then now three, it is at, well, this area right here, as we can see, which I've marked off with the green vertical, or sorry, the green horizontal bar in this case. So the green horizontal bar is the one in question, the one that I'm highlighting right now. And, <clears throat> blah. Just lost my damn. I drink this. I drink this thing this morning. It's called a zinger, okay? And it's a hot ginger shot. It's got like cayenne pepper and ginger in it, um, just because I thought it might be good. And it's actually just wrecking my life. <laughs> it's what it's doing. So uh, maybe never again. Anyways, uh, yes. So in this case, that green horizontal bar um, does correlate very well with the blue cyan vertical bars, okay? So green horizontal versus cyan verticals. That's what we're looking at um, to kind of document where Bitcoin is um, throughout the history of it while it does meet this level on the accumulation and distribution indicator. And as you can see with the cyan ones, again, not the green vertical bars, but the cyan ones, um, it has been a pretty good harbinger of nice things to come for the boo laws um especially the more recent one over here we can see that this area did correlate with bitcoin actually breaking on a closing basis back above its all-time highs from the prior cycle in 2018 um 2019 as you can see so i'm, I'm just i'm just gonna circle it out so that we know exactly what we're talking about um, but i'm talking about that one right there right there um, we have another one over here uh, of similar nature bitcoin was not breaking the prior all-time highs from the prior cycle but it was pretty damn close and again um, after just one corrective month it was up up and away and soon enough yeah it actually did um, do such things and then what do you know if we go to what i would consider really the first iteration of this uh, particular setup or signal would be this one over here and as you can see again bitcoin essentially completing that accumulation range um, popping back up and in this case getting ready for that sideways and upside um, just a few months later did actually return on a closing basis to the prior all-time highs i need to take a cough here uh, it's it's damn zinger thing <coughs> The fuck, man. Um, anyways, uh, there is one prior iteration. It's right in over here. I would say that this one probably doesn't have enough history to really be going off of and looking at this one as legitimate, but 
for what it's worth. I mean, it was nice, but I, I don't really trust that one. It's just too early. Uh, but we can kind of see that there's a rhyme between a lot of the, uh, the, the three other ones that we have seen previously, and it is this. It comes after Bitcoin is one put in the low and then two gone through that sideways and up accumulation. Um, and, uh, and realistically, like the next sort of big thing or, or the next sort of uh, big occurrence was Bitcoin getting ready to, well, test on a closing basis prior to highs. I do not feel comfortable suggesting that. Um, it seems very far away over here. I think best, 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 absolute best fucking case scenario that we see in the next few months would, and this is like ETFs coming and, 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 and the U S says Bitcoin good or some, I don't know, something like that, just some, some, something ridiculous, um, which I think is, is, is still not very likely. Um, I mean, it is likely that Bitcoin's going to get an ETF just like all these things happening at once. Um, but, uh, you know, I think best case scenario is Bitcoin sees like somewhere between 45 and 50. Like that would be best, 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 best moon boy to the fucking tits um, scenario. Um, but, you know, if we go for history, yeah, it has had that. Um, so, uh, so fair enough. Um, just the general thing that I'd be having here is that, you know, it, it does seem that Bitcoin has actually completed um, not just the, the, well, obviously the lows, but that reaccumulation phase as well, or the accumulation phase, I should say, as well, and is now getting ready for a little bit more sideways than up, I suspect. So um, I suspect that this next six month period, this next three to six month period, probably gonna be more interesting than the past six month period. It's not saying much because Bitcoin was in a, you know, pretty tight range here, but um but so far, so good. And then also following up on the weekly signal that we were looking at, um, well, over the weekend, uh, yes, indeed, the weekly accumulation distribution indicator did turn green as well. So we can um, turn this one over here. Boom. Nice. And again, any time we have seen that in the past, which are, there's been 15 total iterations where it's freshly turned green. Um, well, you can see it on the chart for yourself. Uh, generally, good things have happened after that. Yeah, there's been some pullbacks, of course, in the more near term, definitely possible. But ultimately, those pullbacks were opportunities. And realistically, only four of those 15 iterations were what I would consider failures, meaning that they just basically dumped off um, right after that signal was given. But if we went through the nuance interpretation of this, which is what we did over the weekend video, um, then the signals where it turned green for that first tip that were coming within the context of a weekly uptrend, those had actually a 100% hit rate, which was rather interesting. And this would be another example of this because, well, Bitcoin has a weekly uptrend. So there's that. Um, so yeah, uh, again, just another thing that does say that Bitcoin tr likely trades sideways enough from here. Yes, it can pull back down to like 32.5 or 32 even. But the way that Bitcoin closed this monthly was pretty good, um, especially above 34,000 bucks. Anyways, um, do I want to get into that? Yeah, actually, maybe we do just briefly talk about that. Um, yeah, Bitcoin getting its highest monthly close in uh, about a year and a half now, um, getting reclaiming back above the one of the major dumps, May, May of 2022. So that was the Luna or 3AC or whatever the hell. Um, monthly Jewel Light or, or Jewel in this case does continue with its upside curvature and monthly RSI are going to reclaim that that exponential moving average and also just, you know, kind of hovering between the neutral zone and the, and the edge of the bullish control zone, which is, you know, also a generally good thing. And that bi-monthly chart that we referenced yesterday, what do you know? Hidden bullish effort and still in play. Same thing over here and just higher term time frame and all major moving averages continue to be in an upside posturing. And officially that bi-monthly did close as a bullish engulfing over here. Again, I don't discount that things can pull back. Um, I think worst case scenario would be like low 31,000 um, bucks. But I do suspect that that would also be an opportunity. Um, just going off of that. Anyways, um, let's now go into, let's actually go over here. I'm going to show something new. So, um, you know, I, I referenced that uh, that indicator uh, package at the beginning of this video. This is actually one of the indicators that you'll get within that package. They call it the Market Oracle Pro. Um, I did not design this indicator, by the way, but it's it seems like it does okay. It, it's you know, bet it's it certainly offers some sort of an edge. Um, not going to be perfect as nothing is, but you know, just kind of perusing through the data over here, not bad. Anyways, the reason why I bring it up on this particular uh, note is that short term, it actually is suggesting um, that Bitcoin is getting reaccumulated right here and actually did give a little bit of a buy signal 
um, uh, more recently, I guess, uh, yesterday or late yesterday for myself over here in Dubai. But uh, of course, you know, these signals can be resolved fast, as you can see, you know, buy, sell, buy, sell. So um, this is not necessarily saying that this one's going to be like a fucking moonshot, although the last strong buy over here, you know, was pretty good. Uh, got that move from what is it? 28.5. Told you to sell over here. 30, uh, 33.8. Not bad. Um, this strong one over here, like kind of a wash right there, I'd say. So again, not going to be perfect, but uh, but but better than better than better than a coin flip. It looks like you're just kind of again perusing through the data. Yeah, not bad. Um, anyways, uh, yes. So in this case, would be saying that uh, Bitcoin. I try another short-term upside move from here. Um, do we have anything else of that same nature saying that? Well, we can go over here to the HPDR bands and Bitcoin's still just kind of oscillating within the middle of the, uh, you know, of that 50% of historic returns range. So I would say that again, this is constructive behavior over here as these ranges do step up. I suspect still that it might take a little bit more time um, <clears throat> for it to kind of coalesce and consolidate. But uh, currently the bottom side of the 50% of historic returns range lows is 33,300, or sorry, 30, yes, 33,300. Um, so, you know, as long as Bitcoin's above there, it's still more or less range bound in a more bullish fashion below about 33.3. Uh, that's at the point where I could be looking for a much greater pullback down to, you know, 31s-ish, give or take, low 31s, let's say. Um, but for right now, you know, Bitcoin holding it high after a pretty explosive move. That is generally good. Um, also, we can reference the daily range statistics, which again, this this also comes within that indicator package. Um, and for Wednesday, uh, the bullish rate is, you know, aka closing positively, is just above forty one and a half percent. So, not the most bullish day. Although most of the days are like not really too far in any favor except for Thursday, which is massively angled towards the downside. But um, but for Wednesday in particular, um, on the date that it has closed positively, the average return has been 2.68%. And on the days that it has closed negatively, the average return or the average loss has been 2.13%. So uh, also of interest. Um, so I should show, I, I guess I should show off one of the, one of the other indicators that, uh, that they gave me access to within this package. It is, it's, it's, it literally tells you what sort of, um, what's it called, uh, uh, pattern is going on there. I don't know how much I trust this one, to be honest with you. This falling wedge over here, I guess, did work out. As you saw over here, the hourly descending triangle, like it's marking them off correctly. It's just, you know, technically you'd, you'd be looking for a descending triangle to, uh, to break to the downside. Although I guess this green dot here means this one's breaking to the upside, which, yeah, oh, fair enough. Okay, I get it. All right, you got me. You're fuck you and your patterns, but I guess they, I guess it did kind of work in that case. Um, anyways, uh, what else? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, let's go through stochastic momentum, see what kind of matches up for today. We just had a five day closure or actually we just had a bi-monthly and monthly closure. So maybe let's go to that first. Um, so the bi-monthly did, did officially cross the upside. Uh, we did see the 22 so or thousand dollar pivot met. Now the pivot goes up to 23,850, crossing in from a very low level. Okay, monthly time frame going to continue up vertical above 26,000 bucks. Again, getting in the critical zone here. That's also another reason why I do say this current rally. You know, if things really get crazy, like maybe upper 40s. I, again, I think that that's kind of a stretch right now. I don't even feel comfortable saying that, but. Um, you know, I don't think that Bitcoin's going to like explode to all-time highs and new all-time highs from this exact movement. I think that there's going to be a greater monthly consolidation before you see anything like that, and you know, it takes takes some time. Um, anyways, moving on now, uh, five-day time frame, which we saw close for CME yesterday, continues with its upside momentum. Um, it did, or it is, did what? Did, didn't this one close last night? Yeah, it did. Um, oh, I guess it's just meeting this trend line now, so. It'll have a chance to break it on the next period, um, assuming that Bitcoin remains above 27.9. So, so far, so good. Uh, Two-day time frame is going to also continue with this upside momentum above 32.700. But again, getting the critical zone here. That's why I do say, you know, maybe one more move to the upside. But looking for consolidation relatively soon is like not, it's not a bad idea. 
like a more prolonged consolidation. Um, 34,600 on the daily, again, way up there in the critical zone. 12 hour time frame, probably going to be also in the critical zone. Again, extremes on volatility as well. 34,7, uh, the current pivot. Six hour time frame is probably cooling off, but actually up above 34,5. Four hour time frame is going to be down, uh, heavy down, I should say, below 34.8. And hourly is going to be down uh, heavily below 35. So, I'm not getting too much of an agreement from this. You know, short term, does it, does it play a little bit of downside? Probably yes, but like I said, not really getting too much from it. Um, so, perhaps we'll leave things right there. I hope that that was in some way helpful. Um, I'm going to be signing off on that note. Again, just the big focus over here on the monthly accumulation distribution indicator and the follow-up on the weekly as well as other things that we'll get into tomorrow. So with that said, I want to wish you the best best as always. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully tomorrow.